Arthropods are the most diverse group of organisms on the planet. They occur in every possible um, habitat that you can imagine. Uh, they make up most of the biodiversity and in, uh, in some cases, uh, most of the um, uh, uh, animal biomass um, in every habitat. We have a couple of different outreach programs and they've actually all emanated from our traveling arthropod show. And it's to basically make people um, interested and comfortable around insects and to also then make them appreciate um, um, saving uh, arthropod biodiversity. What I do is I travel to different schools uh, here in Flagstaff, elementary schools, and I show uh, bugs, both live and preserved specimens, um, to the kids. It's to encourage them to have a career in science um, and that bugs are nice, they're, they're, they're important, that we need them, and not to just, you know, dump pesticide on everything. So all scorpions, they have a chemical in the exoskeleton which reflects that UV, the ultraviolet light. Scorpions, just under um, the moonlight, it's enough UV uh, to make the scorpions glow, just enough that, that maybe we can't see it, but other insects such as moths are, will, will see this uh, light and they'll actually be attracted to it. And so since all scorpions are predators and they're all nocturnal, they can use this fluoresce as a way to attract food. That's a theory, yeah. It's a theory I happen to agree with. Uh, it makes sense. I've been stung by all the, the major uh, poisonous things here in Arizona um, and many other non-poisonous, but yeah, I've been bitten and stung by pretty much everything I show in my bug shows. And so um, I think it's real important to get stung by a lot of things when you're doing these bug shows because people ask, well, what does it feel like? And so it's really great to be able to have that experience and actually share it with people. For example, getting bitten by a black widow. Um, I can explain that to the T on how painful it is and all the reactions that happen afterwards. A major program that we're initiating um, through the museum is the Colorado Plateau All Taxa Biodiversity Inventory. One of the places that we've initiated the focus of this program is at Canyon de Chelly National Monument. So we travel to Canyon de Chelly every month to two, to two months to either uh, swap out the pitfall traps or to put up night lights. This program is primarily meant to identify um, um, as many taxa as we can of all taxa, not just um, insects, arthropods, but slime molds, fungi, um, um, everything on the Colorado Plateau. And we're targeting the national parks because they're a great place to initiate these kinds of studies. In fact, the ATBI program was initiated at the Great, Sm great Smokies National Park. And the rationale for the program, um, and the one used at the Great Smokies, was simply that they estimated that it would take them 150 years to be able to identify all of the different species that occurred in the, uh, in the uh, Smokies National Park. They also assumed that because of changing um, climate, changing land use, that a lot of those species may go extinct before they even identify them. Just working at Canyon de Chez uh, National Monument, we have, I think, five, we started about a year ago, and we have 576 taxa uh, collected so far, and the, uh, there will be several thousand minimally um, that we'll uh, eventually identify. Since arthropods are such an integral part of all ecosystems, it's important to know what arthropods exist there. You can't protect what you, what you don't know exists.